G'day, I'm Paul. Now, just when you thought grills couldn't get any bigger, well, Hyundai thought they would try and outdo everyone with this here. It's the Palisade. It's been out for a little while now, but it's new to Australia and it brings with it a whopper of a grill. This one here is the top specification Highlander. It's priced at 75 grand, but if this is a bit too much, the whole range kicks off with an entry level V6 for $60,000. So there are a few different options there. This competes with things like the Mazda CX-9, the Nissan Pathfinder, and to a degree, cars like the Kia Sorento even though that is slightly smaller than this. Now, today we're going to do a detailed review of this car. If you want to skip ahead to other parts of this review, you can use the time codes up on the screen there, or if you're on YouTube, just scroll down and use the chapters below. And if you haven't done so already, I'd love it if you could subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon as well. That way you'll find out every single time we drive a grill with tyres. So let's talk exterior. You've got five external colors to pick from and all but white is an additional $695. Okay, let's talk about this grill. Um, it's big. So the, the grill is big itself, but then it has this giant brushed aluminium edge to it. So it really does stand out. And when you see this coming towards you, it's a bit hard to mistake it for anything else. Big Hyundai logo there too. I don't think it actually looks bad. It's just quite imposing and looks very different to every other car in this segment. I think most other cars in this segment go for that. I guess stylish, businessy type look, whereas this, this really has that American style to it. And this car sold in the States, so you can see where they've kind of tried to make it appeal. Now that continues over here with the headlights. So this is quite an interesting cluster. Up the top here, you have your daytime running light going all the way down the bottom. And it kind of looks like it sits behind that panel and runs all the way down. And it's got an indicator built into it there. But the actual headlight module with the uh, LED headlights is down the bottom here. So really interesting setup. We'll whip around to the side. This is where you'll find your 20 inch alloy wheels. Nice design. I think it's got that chrome look on the outside with a slightly darker sort of graphite look on the inside of the alloy wheel. A fairly decent profile tyre. So 50 profile. This should mean that the ride is pretty decent. Hyundai takes I guess a lot of time and a lot of effort to make sure that the cars that they sell here ride well and suit Australian conditions. So this shouldn't be any different, but we'll see what it's like later on. A little bit of plastic cladding along the side there. Now this is interesting as well. Have a look at this. I haven't seen anything like this before. It's that indicator built into the wing mirror. Normally it's just this bottom section that lights up, but they've got like this C shape plugged into there, which is really fascinating. Now in terms of dimensions, you can see them up on the screen there. As a point of reference, this is actually slightly smaller than a CX-9. When you look at it, it actually looks huge and you'd think that it is bigger than a CX-9, but yeah, slightly smaller. So just a, a point of interest there. You've got your roof rails up the top here. Thank you for correcting me in one of the other videos. Um, these are roof rails, not roof racks. Uh, you've got privacy glass and then come around to the back. So you've got your LED tail lights. You can see that cluster goes all the way down there. You've got a couple of little lines up the top. Then they've got this, which is kind of like a brushed chrome look that sits adjacent to the tail light. So that really gives it a bit of character and definition. Another light cluster clustered down the bottom there, some real exhaust pipes, and then big Palisade lettering along the rear. Let me know what you think about all of this. Is this a bit too much, or do you think this is exactly what Hyundai needed to step above the Santa Fe? Righto, we are sitting inside the Palisade. How's this interior colour? It is very schmicko. We will start with the key first though, here it is. So you have lock, unlock, boot, a little bit of chrome, sort of brushed aluminium stuff on top and bottom. Then on the back, you have the Hyundai logo. It's a proximity sensing key, leave it in your pocket, and then you have a push button start in here as well. Quite like that push button start. It's got like a metallic finish to it. Okay, let's talk styling. Um, I like what I'm seeing here because it's quite sophisticated, right? So you've got this big cluster here that has the screen integrated into it. You've got this nice material along the back there that houses um, the head up display as well. And then it's tiered. So it goes from that darker color through to the lighter with this brushed aluminium strip. Uh, I was about to say, I can't see any piano black, but it is around the outskirts here. That's okay. At least it's not down here getting smudged and yuck, which is good news. Um, I will call out though, I don't know what this material is. So this opens and closes, but the material just looks really weird. I wish with this, they would have maybe had wood grain or something like that because I don't know, I feel like in the CX-9, the wood grain really gives this a, a classy look and they even have wood grain up here but they just haven't continued it down here. So a little bit strange. Um, on the topic of wood grain, yeah, I like what they've done there, but strangely, they've put lines over the wood grain. So instead of it just being natural wood grain, they've got all these lines in it, which kind of just interrupts the flow, I reckon. But anyway, I'm not a designer or a stylist, just pointing out my views. Now, what about your touch points? So 
nice and soft there and also soft on the doors. So that's all good. How soft is it? We've tested the main surfaces in this car with our durometer. If you want to see how this compares to other cars that we've tested before, scroll down and have a look at the link in the description. Build quality. Yeah, it all feels nice and strong. No complaints from me. Okay, let's talk infotainment. I'll get rid of this first. So it is a 10.25 inch infotainment system. You can see it there. Now it's interesting because uh, it doesn't really take up the entire section. You can see the screen cuts off just here on the corners. So I don't know why they didn't just bother increasing the size of that. So it takes up that entire part. But anyway, uh, if you want to see a detailed review of this infotainment system, click up here to watch one that we recorded earlier. But today I will take you through just a basic overview. So this is your home screen here you can set your profiles up the top and that will attach your profile to settings within the car and then you can also adjust things like what appears on here you can see a map background there and if you swipe across you have all of your controls for the infotainment system you also have shortcut buttons down the bottom here as well interesting features you have things like the sounds of nature we've seen this previously on kia models driver talk where you can talk to people down the other end of the car so it just takes the microphone up the front and projects the audio down the back which i think is a great feature voice memo in case you get any ideas out on the road quiet mode if you have sleeping kids in the back you don't want to wake them up it's got all of those features which is cool in terms of radio you have am fm DAB plus digital radio. So it's got all of those bases covered. You've also got a 12 speaker Infinity branded sound system. In terms of smartphone mirroring, you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. This is what Apple CarPlay looks like. Full screen integration and it is nice and quick and sharp. I like that. Both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto require a cable. And this is what Android Auto looks like. Disappointingly, it's not a full screen integration for some reason. So it's in this little box in the corner. It's a little bit disappointing. I would have hoped to see a full screen integration there. Um, hey, if you want to see a comparison between Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, click up here. We filmed one previously, did some tests to see which one is better. Now, ahead of the driver, you also have another LCD display. This shows you things like digital speedometer, all-wheel drive controls, navigation, and car settings as well. Moving on to safety tech, some of the main features include autonomous emergency braking, an automatic dimming rear vision mirror, a lane keeping assistant, lane departure warning, radar cruise control, a blind spot monitor built into the wing mirror. You have safe exit assistant, which means you can't open the door if there's another vehicle coming. Very handy if you have kids that are in a hurry. I like the fact that you can also push this button here to not only lock the back windows, but lock the rear doors as well. You have a rear seat reminder. So if you do have kids in the back seat, it will remind you to check that they are out of the car when you leave. And finally, you have a driver attention monitor as well. Let's look at the cameras and the parking sensors. So you have front and rear parking sensors. And let's have a look at the reverse view camera. I'm going to just start the car pop that into reverse. So it's a 360 camera. You can see you've got the views there. You can zoom in and out on that if you need to. And then you can manually select different views from here as well, including those side views. Quality of the camera isn't amazing. Like, have a look at that. That is super just blurry and grainy. And on the 360 camera, it just looks really low quality. So I just wish they used the same system that they use in the Kia Sorento. It's like super high resolution. And so a little bit disappointing, but you do get the full suite of sensors and also active guidelines as well. Before we move on, I have a question for you guys. Do you own a car with a beige or white interior? How do you keep it clean? What's it like long-term? And would you recommend a beige interior if you have a family? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Let's talk about practicality and we'll start with your connectivity. Now inside this center console here, you have wireless phone charging, one USB port for your smartphone mirroring. Down here, you've got another 12 volt outlet and another USB port. And then in the center console, you have yet another USB port and another 12 volt outlet. So you can see the theme here. There is a lot of connectivity options around the car. In terms of storage, where are you gonna whack your phone? Well, your phone can virtually live anywhere here. You can hit these buttons to deploy uh, cup holders and then your phone can easily sit in there and then of course you have wireless phone charging as well you can also store your phone down here if you want if you want it charging through a cable now what about storage for your coffee cup well they're quite 
sort of deep these holders. So yeah, you kind of need to sit, sit it side so it'll put something underneath it to prevent the lid coming off. In terms of regular bottles, you can fit one of these easily inside the cup holder. There's little teeth on the side there to hold it into position too. Then you have storage inside the door as well. Now, here's a surprise. We have something new. A lot of you have asked about a bigger bottle being tested. So this is a much bigger one. Um, I think we'll only test this inside the door so you can get an idea of whether it fits or not. Um, no, it does not fit inside the door of the Palisapel. Not easily anyway without breaking something, so we'll get rid of that. Center console is huge. It is nice and deep. Just to show you how deep it is, watch this. Bottle easily disappears into there and you have a little coin tray as well. Finally, you have this box over here for your glove box. Um, that's really reasonable. Now, there is no sunglasses holder, but you do get this little feature here. So you have a mirror and that means you can keep an eye on everyone in the back of the car and then you can also talk to them using that driver talk feature. Right, let's talk about comfort. So you have dual zone automatic climate control up the front here plus controls for the rear. You also get heated and cooled seats for the front row plus a heated steering wheel. You get electric seat adjustment for the driver and front passenger plus memory. The other thing I like about the seats is the design. They look really nice and cool. Nappa leather, you get the perforations there and they help you from sticking to the seat and that's also where the air comes through for the ventilation but if you follow the seat up you not only see the sunroof but a suede headliner as well so it's pretty cool looking design but i just wonder how clean that's going to stay the seats themselves are really comfy they hug you in nicely the base extends as well and then the steering wheel sits nicely in the hand with those paddle shifters there all of these controls are easy to reach while you're driving as well Second row, let's talk about what it's like here. Well, start off with room. I have stacks of knee room, loads of toe room, and a really decent amount of headroom as well. That's despite the fact we've got the sunroof at the front and then a second sunroof. Well, it's actually not a sunroof because it doesn't open, but you've got a second roof here as well. So there's a fair bit of space regardless of all of this stuff that eats into it. Your air vents are built into the roof here, so you can adjust those as you go. Down the centre stack, this is where you have your third zone of climate control, plus the heated seat controls for the two outboard seats. Keep in mind, if you get this in the seven seat configuration, because you can even do seven or eight, it's a no cost option, you actually get cooled seats as well for the outboard seats. Um, so that's worth keeping in mind. USB ports into the seats themselves, plus a 12 volt outlet down the bottom map pockets here and then if I drop this down you have center armrest with two cup holders see how it goes fitting our bottle the big bottle doesn't fit anywhere here so I'm not going to bother with that fits easily there then you have storage inside the doors as well plus more cup holders at the top of the doors so it is absolutely jam-packed you've got this shade that you can manually pop into position as well plus two iso fix points on the outboard seats seats themselves move so they're in a 60 40 combination so you can see here i can move that forwards and backwards to give more room for the third row as well so really big fan of this space and even for adults you have acres of room here now third row access it is actually pretty straightforward you have a lever down here that folds the seat flat or you can simply push a button and that will move everything out of the way for you to climb in let's see if it's adult friendly uh, yep okay so getting in is a little tight but it's not too bad so let me see what this is like if i start bringing this back so bring it back to about there and lock it in there you go that's actually not terrible i've got a decent amount of knee room toe room's pretty reasonable and headroom is good you've got to consider that this isn't a massive massive suv but I have plenty of room here. So two cup holders. I also have a USB port there and then you have the same thing on either side. And then you can also fit three abreast here. I don't think you'd be fitting three adults abreast, but you can fit three kids abreast, making this an eight seater. Now, Igor, how much leg room is there down the front there? Okay, that's not too bad. That's a reasonable amount. So you can always move this forward and back if you need more or less room. So big SUV, does that mean big cargo space? Let's have a look, see power tailgate swing out of the way there so you have around 300 liters of cargo space here when the third row is in position not a huge amount of room but we'll see how it fares with our laptop bag and our suitcase look at that fits beautifully and then what you can do is drop your third row so pull of that we'll 
drop that out of the way. Same story over here. Way that goes. You get about 700 litres of cargo space there. I'll give you a look at that as well. This will easily fit, but it's good to get a visual. Finally, if you do want a whopper amount of room, you can drop your second row using the buttons here and that expands to around 1,300 litres of cargo space. That is a big old boot. Now, what about your spare tyre and the other bits and pieces? So under here, you have the cargo blind, the jack, and a few other odds and ends. You have hooks off to the side, a big old subwoofer, a 12 volt outlet, and then the spare tyre, it lives under the car, which means it's not taking up a valuable space in the back here. Okay, we're on the road in the Palisade. Now you've got two engine options for Palisade, a petrol V6, similar to the engine that we tested recently in the Kia Carnival. Click up there if you wanna watch that review. The only limitation to the V6 is it's front wheel drive only. So if you want all wheel drive, like we have here in the top spec Highlander, it's mated to a diesel. It's a 2.2 liter turbocharged four cylinder diesel engine. It makes 147 kilowatts of power and 440 Newton meters of torque. It's actually a pretty reasonable amount for a four cylinder diesel, especially in a vehicle this size. You hear those numbers and you think to yourself, that's probably not gonna be enough to move this big uh, but it actually does a pretty competent job. All of that torque is sent through an eight-speed automatic transmission, and it goes through what's called H-Track, which is Hyundai's all-wheel drive system. The way that works, if I flick over to the screen here, you can see that it's constantly varying torque between the front and rear axles, depending on the drive mode that you're in. And then if you do want more torque, give it a punch and it will start sending it between the front and the rear. And then if you're in sport mode, it obviously sends that a little further to the rear. Right, so what does it feel like? We're just in comfort mode here. We'll give it a little kick. Hey, that's pretty good. So it pushes you back into the seat nicely. Like it's, it's not going to pull the skin off your bones, but it's actually not too bad for what it is. The, the limitation that we've got is, it's just Igor and I, we can't put eight people into here. I suspect if you did load it up, it'd feel a little bit slower, but I'm actually pretty impressed with that. For a four cylinder diesel, that's pulling along nicely. The gearbox is really smooth as well. It's never hunting. It's always ready to go in the right gear and it'll even lean on the torque band. So if I roll into the throttle, it won't dive back through the gears. It'll just use the turbocharged diesel to get everything moving. I did notice though, it can be a little bit noisy when you get stuck into it. It's especially noisy outside as well. You can hear it clattering away there. It's not terrible, it's just not amazing. Fuel economy comes in at 7.3 litres per 100 kilometres. That's the official claim. We are sitting on 9.8 litres per 100 k's. So not quite that seven litre per 100 claim. Right, let's talk drive mode. So you've got comfort and you change them here using this little uh, spinny thing. I don't know, whatever you call this thing. So you move it from comfort to eco. Eco dulls the throttle response a little bit and will also change the torque attribution, whether it goes to the front or the rear axle. And then you can go through sport and smart. Smart just kind of looks out for the type of driving that you're doing. And if you are getting stuck into it, it will pick the right torque distribution for you. So in sport mode here, I can feel everything is instantly sharper. It doesn't really feel any quicker. It's just doing everything quicker. So it's changing through gears quicker and it's more eager to jump back through the gears instead of holding a gear and uh, just using the torque band. So it'll shuffle through them a little more often. You also have off-road modes. So you can switch between snow, mud and sand by flicking the other way around. All that's gonna do is adjust how much torque is sent between the front and rear axle and how much traction control intervention you have. Hyundai doesn't have an official zero to 100 time, but we thought we'd put it up against the stopwatch to see how it goes. Okay, let's talk handling and steering. Yes, this is not a Ferrari, but keen to see what it feels like. It's actually not terrible. Um, yes, it has a little bit of body roll, but for such a big rig, it sits nice and flattish through corners. The steering has a decent amount of resistance to it when it's in sport mode. So you can really get that feedback through the wheel. If I slot it back to comfort, it's really light as well. So I think you get the best of both worlds there with that steering tune. Now, like other Hyundai products in Australia, this car has been tuned for Australian road conditions. I've mentioned this a few times in other videos before, but 
Australian road conditions are no better or worse than anywhere else in the world. It's more the diversity of roads that we have. So you've got gravel, you've got cobblestones, you've got potholes, you've got highways, course chip, you name it, we've got it. So these cars have to be tuned for a greater variety of conditions, which is why a super sporty tune isn't good and then a super soft tune isn't good either. So we want something sort of in the middle there. And they've gone for a really nice and comfortable tune that's on the slight, slight side of sporty, but not too much. There are no adaptive dampers, so it's a single fixed damper setup, uh, but that's not such a bad thing. So obviously adaptive dampers are great with sports cars, but for something like this, uh, the tune actually caters for most road conditions. Let's talk turning circle, 11.8 meters. It is bang on the exact same as the Mazda CX-9 and Look, it's not terrible, it just means when you are in and around the city, something this big is going to need a little bit of room to turn around. You know what's strange with visibility in this car? It's slightly smaller than a CX-9, I've mentioned that before, but it actually feels bigger inside the cabin, like the cabin feels huge. And same on the visibility front, it feels like a much bigger vehicle behind the wheel. It feels like I'm sitting up a little bit higher as well. So there is a ground clearance of 222 millimetres. Things that you can do basic sort of off-roading, like going to a campsite or something like that, nothing too serious. Uh, but I do see down the front of the bonnet there, I've got front and rear parking sensors, big wing mirrors too, with the blind spot monitors built into those. Visibility out the rear is pretty decent. It's a narrow envelope, but it's not terrible. And the cool thing is when I pop the indicator on, I get a screen come up in front of me with the cameras that look down the side of the car. That is a really cool feature and is going to come in handy if you are doing highway driving or something like that and you want to use your blind spot monitors in the wing mirror and also a backup here. You will never have an excuse to merge into anything. So Hyundai Palisade, I think this is creating a trend now of these big SUVs that are popular in the States that are probably going to do well in Australia. 75 grand is a lot of money, but I can't think of any features that it's missing inside. It really is jam packed. It's got a punchy diesel engine as well, and it's fairly fuel efficient. So. Um, yeah, I, I'm a fan of it. I, I think what they've done here is great. It is a shame that this didn't come here early and it's kind of midway through its product life cycle now. So there should be an update coming soon and we should benefit from that. As